everyone, it's Maddie. I'm Vee, and today we're going to be doing a serious review of one of our absolute favourites, Geek, Geek Girl. Girl. There are nine books in the series, including six novels, two short story collections, and one tiny novella for World Book Day. We're going to be focusing on the six main books of the series, including Geek Girl, Model Misfit, Picture Perfect, All That Glitters, Head Over Heels, and Forever Geek. So first we thought we'd say that we have been following this series from the beginning. I remember going into a Tesco in 2013 and seeing Geek Girl front and centre, picking it up immediately, and then just reading it as soon as I got home because it was big font and short chapters, and that's like my favourite combination. Even though the series has only been going on for four years, there have been so many books out, and we've had Harriet in our lives for a really long time. So this sequel was one of our most anticipated releases of the year, and it doesn't disappoint, so we can't wait to talk about that at the end of the video. So first is Geek Girl. And if you don't know already, this is the story of Harriet Manners, who is a geek. She goes with her best friend Nat to the Birmingham Clothes Show, and gets spotted by an agent, and then is thrown into the world of modelling. One of the things that makes Geek Girl so unique is its inclusion of facts. Normally at the beginning of every chapter, especially in the first couple of books, Harriet will list some facts and then make them relevant to her life. So we've kind of subconsciously learned a lot of things from this series. But what we loved most about Geek Girl itself was the humour. It's not necessarily that Harriet is a funny character because she's very practical, but she's not very level-headed, so she gets into some sticky situations and the way that she processes things or doesn't see things coming is quite comical and the people around her, the way they react to how she behaves is really funny. <laughs> Harriet's dad Richard is the funniest character. He is a self-proclaimed maverick and his lightheartedness really bounces off from Harriet's stepmom Annabelle's seriousness. The two are really prominent throughout all of Harriet's life and obviously because she's only 15 and working in an adult sphere that means she always has to have parental permission to go to all the different countries. So so they always, always, always have a place in the story. But something that makes Geek Girl different from the rest of the series is that because it's the first book, it's very much about establishing all of the relationship, how Harriet feels towards her parents and her friends. So modelling is almost like a side note to the story and it only gets more prominent throughout. There are plenty of realistic characters and situations, but there is also a slight eccentricity to the whole thing, especially Wilbur, Harriet's agent, which creates this just generally joyful tone to the whole book. So even when things are going wrong, you still have like this buoyancy to the whole thing. Probably the most important character that's introduced in the first book for Harriet's whole life is Nick, the male model, who turns out to be her main love interest throughout the series. And this was one of our favourite relationships to develop, and it's something that as the series goes on, it builds up in layers and you know more and more about the relationship. And this is where the short stories actually come in quite a bit, because it fills in the gaps that are missed out. And there's one in Sunnyside Up, I think it is, where you get Nick's perspective of the their first meeting and it's really lovely to compare the two because you get the real sense that Nick liked Harriet immediately. It's something important to keep in mind when beginning this series that Harriet is an unreliable narrator. She tells you what she wants to tell you and therefore she keeps back a lot of her life and this isn't such a big deal in Geek Girl but as the series progresses, especially with her relationship with Nick, she holds things back from you. So now we're going to talk about Model Misfit which is the second book in the series and what we always claimed to be our favourite when there are only four books around. This is the book where Harriet goes to Japan and her modelling adventures completely explode. It's really amped up and you can tell that so much detail was put into making the shoots really interesting to read. They're so dynamic and diverse and Harriet gets into loads of shenanigans and gets to wear some beautiful clothes. This is probably why it's our favourite one because you just feel such a part of Harriet's world. Even more models are introduced into Harriet's life and while the cast of Geek Girl is relatively small there are a lot of secondary characters that pop in and out throughout the whole thing. And one of the most important ones is Rin. She's Harriet's best modelling friend and they really click together in Japan because Rin is so interested in all the facts Harriet has to say and is kind of obsessed with her in the same way Toby is. I guess we haven't really talked about Toby and Nat which is a problem but they're Harriet's two best friends back in England, Nat being her best best friend and Toby being her stalker slash friend. <laughs> and Mother Misfit also introduces Bunty who is another member of Harriet's family, her grandma on Annabelle's side. She's another eccentric Wilbur-like character and it's really fun for Harriet to have another adult dynamic in the story. Next is Picture Perfect and this is the story where Harriet moves to America because Richard has a new job. There's a lot of isolation in this book and this is probably our least favourite just because it feels like Harriet's personality has regressed back to what it was in Geek Girl because she made such progress in Model Misfit but here her emotions are running all over the place, she has a few temper tantrums and she doesn't really click with everyone she's around uh, just because her world has got a lot smaller. Harriet is 
is generally quite angry in the third book, so it kind of puts her at the least likeable that she ever is in the entire series. But once you've gone down, there's only one way you can go. That way is all the glitters. This is where Harriet comes back to the UK and is introduced to sixth form two weeks later than everyone else. Her best friend Nat is going to fashion college instead of regular sixth form, so that means Harriet is separated from her friends, and it forces her to make new ones. Throughout the series, Harriet's also been dealing with her childhood bully Alexa, and she's at the head of the lynch mob, making Harriet feel really alienated and different from everyone else, but this book is where she realises that everyone has a tiny inner geek about them. One thing you would expect from a story like this, where a character rockets into fame, is that question of who you can be friends with, because you don't know whether they're going for you or for your opportunities. So this is the book that kind of explores that one. Harriet is such a trusting person, as already <laughs> displayed in the last three books, so her radar of whether people are genuinely interested in her isn't quite the same as maybe a usual person. She's quite socially inept. This is the book where you can predict what can go wrong the most, and that made it the most nervous book to read because I was constantly waiting for something bad to happen to Harriet, and I really didn't want that because she's so precious in this one, and I think that's just because she's got that general sense of naivety as she doesn't really know who she can trust and who she's friends with. Next is our favourite book of the series, Head Over Heels, and this is really the romance one, as you can probably guess from the title. It's where we see the reoccurrence of old characters, Rin comes over to the UK and that adds a cute dynamic to their friendship, and Harriet's also made some solid friends at sixth form, Jasper and India, who create this little group that she's all about controlling. Head Over Heels is really exciting because it seems to have everything going for it. It's got the family element, the friendship element, it's also got some crazy modelling adventures including a trip to India, and also a really cool fashion shoot that they're doing for Vogue. Head Over Heels is also where you can see the most character development for Harriet and all the things she's learned in the past two books where you thought she's not really making that much progress, mm -hmm. so this feels like a great payoff reading it. So although it's a step in the right direction for Harriet, she still has her shortcomings, she's always going to be Harriet at the heart no matter how many people want to try and change her. But Head Over Heels is really special because it deals with a lot of complex relationships, especially the budding of a new romance. And so that leads on to Forever Geek, which is the final book where everything you've ever wanted out of Geek Girl is put into one, and it's the most satisfying conclusion you would ever want. We were talking about this earlier, the reason why Forever Geek works as the perfect ending is because the general theme of the book is endings. In a way, it really does feel like a last hurrah. You have a cameo from literally every character ever, from book two and book four, they're all all in there. Every single character, whether they're main or minor, gets to have a little bit of success in this book, and mm. you can extrapolate what they're going to be doing afterwards and feel super satisfied with where they're going in their lives. You can be secure that everyone is completely comfortable with their own personalities at this point, and that's mostly true of Harriet. So in Forever Geek, Harriet goes to Australia, which is where Nick is originally from, so you know that this is going to be an emotional story. And this time she gets to go with her best friend Nat, she's been on modelling adventures with her dad, and with Annabelle, and with Bunty, and now she's finally going with her best friend. So although female friendship is a really important like string throughout the whole thing, it's not super prominent until this one because Harriet and Nat actually get to spend a lot of time together. And Harriet's one goal on this trip is not her own modelling career, but starting Nat's fashion designing one. The one thing we were slightly nervous about this book though is because we knew it would be dealing with the last bits of Nick and Harriet's relationship that we didn't know about, that it would overshadow the friendship element, but Nick doesn't return until 40% through the book, leaving lots of time to establish Nat and Harriet's friendship in Australia. Bunty gets to go on this adventure too, so this one had such a connection to family, more than we've had before, and it hits like a certain emotional intensity as well that we haven't seen with Geek Girl. I think that that is what made it most deserving of the five star rating of this series, because although we've given a few of the books five stars, Forever Geek just hit a little section of me that Geek Girl hadn't yet spread to. It's like throughout the whole thing, Holly Smell was just holding that one one little bit back, and then in Forever Geek she just gives it to you. As for character arc, this is perfect for Harriet. She's almost come full circle with her self-discovery and learning who she is, and you really feel like she's in a comfortable place, and although we would adore like eight more books in this series, I really want to see Harriet go to university and what would happen there, you kind of feel happy to leave her where she is. Yeah. And you feel happy to leave everyone where they yeah. are, and I think that's the point. Overall, what we really like about Geek Girl is that it's so accessible, it's funny, 
it's endearing, and it does the perfect balance of serious and frivolous. It's also something that can be enjoyed by all ages. There's gonna be something relatable. Even if you can associate with some of her negative traits, that's still really important to have this flawed character that doesn't always get things right. We got to meet Holly Smale last year, and she was talking about Geek Girl from a feminist perspective. So we'll leave a link to the videos we have of that because it's really interesting to hear her talk about it and what makes Geek Girl special in that aspect. So that's just another reason to read it. That's everything we have to say about this truly wonderful series. And for nine books, Harriet got to do so much and go to so many different countries. And I feel like reading it really satisfied everything I wanted in a book. It had travel and adventure and romance and friendship. So there's just not a theme that it There's not cover. a theme missing. Yeah, exactly. So if you haven't already, we hope this encourages you to pick up Geek Girl. Let us know if you've read any of the books in the series and if you love Harry as much as we do. And if we inspired you to read them, because that's seriously my favourite thing to hear that we, because of our recommendation, people picked up Geek Girl. Thank you everyone so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.